To make printed circuit boards, I'm using a modified Epson Artisan 50 printer. As you can see here, I've uh, stripped all the paper feed mechanism out of the back of it and fashioned a, a plexiglass feed tray. And to use a carrier to carry the board through, I'm using this uh, heavy duty, thick, it's about 50 pound. Um, almost cardboard-like uh, paper that I'm going to tape the, uh, the uh, printed circuit board material to. Now, because I had to modify the, uh, the feed mechanism, there's a paper out uh, indicator or paper presence switch, which I have to account for in the carrier. I'm going to make a small cutout in the paper uh, to, in effect, allow a leader of that, um, this carrier to uh, be inserted or pre-inserted uh, into the printer. Uh, I've actually uh, got a uh, print uh, roller uh, feed handle just by uh, uh, taking some of the spare parts and and um, fastening it to the uh, internal uh, gear mechanism. I can actually turn that externally. What you can see here is I've used a single edge razor blade and cut out about a three quarter inch by three inch long um, notch in my carrier paper and uh, we'll use that to uh, fake out the uh, paper feed sensor uh, when we print the image. I'm printing my uh, circuit board image which you can see here uh, straight out of um, Eagle and uh, of course you don't want all the outlines you only want just the circuit traces. This is a single sided board and uh, I'm actually going to um, get rid of uh, by turning the layers off I want to get rid of several of the layers that we don't want. In fact, we're just going to go ahead and select none here for all the layers. And then we're going to add in, we want the top layer. We want pads, vias, and that's pretty much it. Uh, that's about all we want, I think. Let's apply that and see what happens here. That looks pretty good. Uh, that looks like exactly what we want here. What we have is a... Uh, our copper layers and I found that uh, the ink color doesn't make a whole lot of difference so I'm just going to leave the colors as their default we'll go ahead and uh, say okay to that so we're ready, basically ready to print at this point the options I have are uh, solid over here and uh, you can see where it is positioned on the paper and uh, now over here in the print what you're going to see is it's there's nothing loaded so it's going to actually try to cycle the printer and you can see the handle turned down there as it does this. It's trying to find that paper, and of course it can't because there's no paper there. So eventually it'll give up. Like it does this right there, and as you can see, the right hand most um, paper out light uh, came on. Those other two flashing lights uh, are ones uh, complaining about the ink. I may be low in ink in one of the cartridges, or at least it thinks so. But the key thing is that right hand indicator. So what I'm going to do is come over here, and now I'm going to go ahead and feed in my template, or my uh, carrier sheet, and I'm going to feed that in just like that, and um, by using a little handle on the side here, I can actually go ahead and suck the paper on in just far enough to position it, and that's usually about where I want it, right there with that gap. Uh, just about two inches out from the back and then we'll come through here and go ahead and press the paper feed button to say okay I've loaded paper in there now and the printer will go ahead and print and it'll actually print my image on the page now you notice the image actually shows up a lot farther down the page than it did in my depiction but that's because it's that far down from where that uh, L gap is, it's the gap in the paper is actually what it thinks is the top of the paper. So that tells me exactly where the circuit board is going to be printed uh, on the page. So all I have to do is cut out the appropriate size uh, copper now and uh, prepare it and just uh, tape it down right over that spot. As you can see here I've cut a piece of copper just a little bit bigger than uh, what I need for this particular project. Uh, this is regular um, uh, 16th inch thick uh, glass epoxy board. Uh, I've slightly sanded the edges to make them uh, uh, a little bit 
uh, smooth so they won't uh, catch going through the printer. But the printer will handle uh, stuff of this thickness. So you can see here I've taped down the uh, the copper to the board and uh, cleanliness is next to godliness. You don't want to touch the uh, the board. In fact, uh, the board surface should be cleaned with uh, acetone and uh, paper towel or, or cloth. Um, I've used scratch pads before, but I find that they tend to scratch the copper and that can cause undercutting on fine traces. So I just, I don't try to abrade the copper any, I just try to clean all the grease off of it. We are, I've gone through the, uh, the uh, sending of the uh, job to the printer, uh, letting it detect paper out. And as you can see here, where uh, we've got the paper out indication, so I'm going to reach over here and press the button and let it feed through and print. And what you can see here is the circuit printed directly on the copper. And I fortunately I did not uh, overlap but with any of my uh, tape, so I got lucky there. So now we're going to go out and uh, dust it with uh, toner. Well, we've moved out here into the garage, and toner's kind of messy, so I use this uh, hemostat here, which uh, clamps onto the board and holds it very nicely. What we're going to do here is uh, set the board down a little tray, like so, and I'm going to uh, take this little squeeze bottle. This little squeeze bottle here is filled with ordinary um, uh, toner from a copy machine, and I'm just going to spray it lightly. In fact, it'll almost flow out just all over the board, just like that. Just cover the board up good. And then I typically just shake it off a little bit like this, side to side, and then tap it. And what you can see here is the actual circuit traces. But you can see a lot of extra um, uh, extra darkening there uh, where the powder stuck to it. Either there was a little dampness on the board or might have been a little grease. And what I found really works really well is to take a little uh, low pressure air gun here. Uh, there's nothing attached to it. It's just the air gun itself. I'm using about 40 pound pressure. And with that you can just dust off. See how neatly that works? You can just dust off all of these excess toner and you can do that it'll stick where the ink is as you can see here it sticks very nicely and you can get in close and you can just really dust it off really nicely getting rid of all that excess toner so you don't have the copper traces and so then what you wind up with a little focus here is a nice deep dark copper trace uh, or toner trace everywhere the ink was wet and the ink is still wet so again you want to be careful this is fragile I'm going to blow off just a few more spots here just clean it up just a little bit more because trust me every place you leave it it will leave copper so this works quite well okay now for the toaster Okay, what we see here is a, an ordinary toaster oven. This is the cheapest little Oster toaster oven I could find. And I actually set the control all the way up on broil. And I'm going to set the uh, timer right there where you see toast, about in the middle of that uh, graduated area. Here we go. So there our board is in on the tray. I'm just going to close that. Go ahead and... Uh, turn on the toaster, you have to turn it all the way past to 15 and then back to about the toast setting and let it rip and we're done one of the things I like about the toaster oven is uh, you, it uh, has a timer that turns itself uh, off uh, automatically the trick here, and it may vary with your toaster oven, is to heat the copper enough so that the toner fully and thoroughly melts um, into the uh, copper. So here we have our circuit board, fresh out of the toaster. I'm going to take it in here and uh, 
the acid test will be to run it under water and see if anything washes off. If it doesn't, we're good. We'll run the sink here. That also cools it off. As you can see, the etch is now thoroughly on there. And it's, uh, it's actually physically on there. You can rub it, you can feel it. As a matter of fact, I'm going to have to use solvent to get it off after we actually finish etching in the copper bath. So now for the etch. And here's the finished result, fresh out of the etch. A little focus here. There we go. Look at that beautiful, sharp line definition. Beautifully done etch circuit board. Now all I've got to do is go outside and take a scratch pad and uh, some acetone and we'll uh, get down to the copper. Well, there's the board, fresh out of the etch, and fresh out of uh, getting taking the uh, um, toner off with some uh, acetone, just ordinary ordinary acetone that you get at a uh, hardware store, and got just a little bit of undercutting or pitting, rather, in a couple of places. Probably didn't toast it quite long enough. Uh, generally speaking, uh, if the copper is a little bit discolored, you've toasted it long enough. You want to you want to get a good melt. But this board's perfectly good for what I'm up to. One of the things I like to do is uh, use this silver plating powder. It's made by Coolant. This stuff's fairly expensive. I bought this jar probably close to 30 years ago now, uh, maybe longer. It was probably thirty or forty dollars then. It's close to two hundred dollars now for uh, this pound of silver plating powder. Of course, a pound would last you a lifetime. Okay, here's our circuit board. I'm just going to go ahead and wet it a little bit. And I'm going to dip a wet finger in this uh, silver plating powder and just kind of start rubbing it on the board, just like this. He just rubs it on like a paste, and you can add a little more if you need to. Just dip it like this, and just rub it on the board. And I'll show you the finished result in a minute, because really it's going to take two hands here. It's a little difficult to video this. And here's our circuit board, and you can see the uh, silver plating on the uh, copper traces now which uh, helps uh, keep the copper from tarnishing and uh, also helps with the soldering. So we're ready to actually uh, begin uh, drilling some holes in the few places we have to drill holes and uh, mounting the surface mount uh, socket. And just for grins thought I'd show you the uh, completed circuit. Here we have a uh, everything surface mount except for these uh, two components. I didn't happen to have any surface mount resistors and uh, zeners are the right value, so I use conventional components there, but I use a surface mount socket. And we have an ID12 module plugged in here, ID12 Innovations, which is a um, RFID reader. And to demonstrate that, uh, let's hook it up to the little uh, uh, test jig that I have here. The jig I have set up uh, uses a roving networks uh, RN131 module to uh, take uh, serial to Wi-Fi and so what we're going to do is go ahead and power this up we'll hit the uh, on switch here and as you can see the uh, modules powered up terminal window session and we'll zoom in on that just a little bit and hitting on the address there we go hello and what we'll do here is use this little uh, RFID card, and you probably can't see the little yellow light flash, but every time I go in close, we get a unique RFID sent from the card through to the computer, just like so.